we're uh, on our way over here to uh, pick some vegetables for a concoction we're going to make on our way. I'm going to give Stanfast some watermelon rinds. But we have a little hornet here who's uh, also likes to eat the watermelon rinds. So I guess I'll leave him with a little piece. Or I think that's a her actually. Uh, I'll leave her with a little piece and then I'll give the rest to Stanfast. He really likes banana peels. And he likes to stand up like that um, because I think he likes to have a more eagle eye view over the place. We're going to go and get some okra. So these okra here, I call it a nose. That nose is so stiff that you really can't bend it. These ones up here, their nose is a little bit more flexible, but that's almost too tough to eat right there. This one here, even though it's pretty good size, it's, uh, it, it's, it'll still be tender and good to eat. So typically it's good to use a knife uh, because you can potentially like rip off leaves and things. Um, okra is really high in calcium and it grows like a weed. So especially for people who are beginning with their gardens, maybe uh, it's just one of those things that you can have success with it. Uh, even even without you know having a lot of prior experience this is a pretty good size one but it's still really tender and the nose bends really well you can even have a, a smaller one that looks small and the nose is too stiff and you won't want to eat it so you just kind of check the nose little ones like this are always going to be tender enough a little one like that, you don't even need a knife, you, it just snaps off. So what is your plan with the bigger ones? Uh, leave them on there. Yeah, so you just leave them on and uh, they'll just make seed. And once they're completely dried up on the plant, then you take them inside and you dry them some more. Um, we might do a video on saving okra seed later in the season. Now, if you are gone for a few weeks and you don't pick your okra, it stops producing more okra. You have to pick it really consistently in order to keep it going. What variety of okra is this? It's called Clemson spineless. So uh, it, they have little spines similar to stinging nettle maybe. And so when you're picking it, it can be kind of painful sometimes. Um, but this variety has less of the spines than some of the other varieties. Uh, we've got some sweet potato uh, sweet potatoes here um, their sweet potato is in the same family as the morning glory and uh, during the drought times there was no blooms here at all um, but now that we've had some good rain as flowering um, and they're beautiful blooms they'll open up in the evening so during this time of day they're closed up but in the evening they open up a little bit uh, we're going to get some of the you can see some of these bigger leaves are a little more tough. The newer growth here, I'm going to take a few of these uh, leaves for our concoction. Uh, these sweet potato leaves, some people might not like the taste, but they are really nutritious. Let food be your medicine 
and medicine be your food. So these are starting to feel a little tough even though they're small. I'll just... Okay. There's a pineapple tomato that I'm going to grab there. The pineapple tomato it is like a very low acid. It's an heirloom variety. Uh, it's one of the one of the best. One of the, or for me, it's one of my favorite tomato varieties. So the okra is in the mallow family, and uh, has beautiful, beautiful, beautiful flowers. So even if you don't like okra, you could grow it in your flower bed, and as a as a beautiful flowering plant. They say that the slaves, when they brought them over from Africa, that they took okra seeds and put them in their ears to like smuggle them to bring them over here because they weren't like allowed to just take a bag of seeds with them. Um, but they really, really loved okra and they wanted to have it with them, so they put, brought the seeds with them over on the ships from Africa. I should have picked this a few days ago, so there's some that are too tough. Okra is something you really need to pick like every day or, or at least every other day. Okay, I think we have enough okra. We're going to go and find some peppers. got some yellow peppers um, yeah orange would probably be more accurate oh I missed a watermelon there's a watermelon when we were picking I missed it that's probably maybe 35 pounds I don't know These are sort of chocolate colored when they're ripe. Okay. Well, I guess we'll uh, head back towards the house and we'll get some more tomatoes. We've got um, another tomato here that we're going to pick. So, uh, you have like this main leaf here, and then you have the main vine here. See the main vine, the, the leaf coming out, and then you have uh, 
this one called a sucker. So if you prune your suckers out, and they can put their energy into the fruit rather than into uh, making lots of leaves. And then we have blight trouble sometimes. So pruning these suckers makes it where the sunshine can go and there's more airflow and you'll have a healthier tomato plant and bigger tomatoes. You know, prune your suckers if you can. Okay, we've got some cherry tomatoes here. We'll pick a few of those. And then we've got some basil. Pick a little bit of basil. some kale here uh, you can see how it has a beautiful purple beautiful purple uh, stem there and veins uh, ordinarily when I put kale when I plant kale in the spring during the hot part of the summer the bugs just like eat it up and it kind of dies out uh, and then I have to replant in the fall um, but this kale has gone all the way through the summer and is doing really, really, really well, uh, which is like really a miracle. It really is because like usually it's just so hot and the bugs just really go after it. Um, but uh, we're really grateful. We'll get a little bit more kale here. This is a different variety of okra. It's red, the red stems and kind of a blush red on it. I didn't plant these, uh, or intend to plant these here. They just came up from seed that had scattered. And so uh, for those that are new to gardening or growing kale, um, if you, if you just hold the leaf and just pull it, you can pull the whole plant up. So there's kind of a technique where the stem is here and then you're, you're going down like that with your thumb uh, and then that way. So does your thumb pierce it or does here, your thumb just provide the stem? Uh, get a view from there. So see how I'm holding my fingers? Thumb is here like that. So it just snaps it off. Then okay. like, like, like that. Or you can use a knife or scissors if you're more comfortable. I think mom uses a knife usually or scissors. Okay, I think we've got enough now. Now, these were hybrid tomatoes and you can see that they uh, just kind of died out there. The blight got them. Um, and then, for some reason, these tomatoes, the blight just kind of, there was tomatoes here, but they kind of died out. But over here on the end, they did they did a lot better over here on the end, or on this side. This particular tomato, I didn't plant it. Um, there was like a, a tomatoes here last year, and there was a few tomatoes that were rotten, and they just rotted there. And then in the spring, these just popped up of their own accord.
Okay, and now we'll go up here and uh, we have a few worms here. You can eat them if you want extra protein or you can pick them off. With organic produce, you'll, worms are a given at times. When the weather gets cooler, we, we won't have worms anymore, but with the warmer weather, it's kind of a given that you'll have a few worms on your kale. So, if we were cutting watermelons, we would use this side and the groove catches the juice. Um, but if we're not doing something juicy, this other side is better. What about tomatoes? Yeah, uh, you, you probably would use that other side with tomatoes. I've ever done this exact combination before, but I've done something kind of along this line. With yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So these okra, sometimes the, the tip can be a little more fibrous than the rest of it. And so I'll probably just put the tips over here and uh, Okra is really slimy, and when I first started growing a garden, I realized that oh, okra is easy to grow. It's like a weed. I should grow a lot of it. And then uh, I I didn't like the taste of it at all. And then I decided, you know, I'm going to choose to like anything that's healthy for me. And uh, so now I like it. So your taste buds can change whenever you're choosing eat choose to like the things that are healthy now if you read in the book of uh, Daniel uh, and also Revelation it speaks of a beast there's a beast with uh, seven heads and ten horns and then it speaks of a little horn that rises up. And the interesting thing about these okra is that you can like uh, make a horn with them. And uh, they're, uh, you should definitely, if you have children, you should definitely grow okra and then uh, you can, you know, do different things. You can have horns and uh, they, uh, they're very, I think the hair on my face keeps them from sticking as well. The, bring your children into the kitchen and uh, then show them that cooking can be really fun. Is visiting us today from uh, California. California. Yep. How long did you drive? To school, I drove 34 hours total. Oh wow. Over three days, so I was doing 10, 10 hour shifts. Okay. Woo. Uh, but from uh, IU's, probably three hours here. Okay. Pretty quick. Yeah. Okay. Got a few sweet potato leaves to 
cut up here. It feels good. It, it actually feels soothing, like it's cool. Like an air conditioner? Yes, yeah, kind of like that. Yes. Uh, the, some people recommend like um, cutting cucumbers and laying it on your face. Uh, it's supposed to be good for your skin and, uh, and relax you, you know. Uh, Put it on your eyes. Even if the, it gets rid of the bags, I think. Yeah, I, yes, yes. Well, I mean, I think my face is clean enough. No. No? Okay. <laughs> All right, we better get our kale cut up here. So after you go across this way, then you can move it, and then now you're going across the other way. And I'm putting the point down, and then bringing it down. I like it. Make sure it's chopped up pretty fine. Oh, that one's not supposed to go in there. Thank you. All right. And then uh, we'll put our chocolate pepper in. You can't eat the seeds, you can chew them up, they're pretty fibrous. Uh, most people don't eat them, but you can eat them if you want to. So this is a beautiful tomato. It's a pineapple tomato, but it has a rotten spot. So we need to do a surgical operation to cut away the rottenness. Now, sin in our life is like a rotten spot. The longer that rotten spot stays there, the more it grows, and eventually the whole thing gets rotten. But it can be cut out. So if you have sin in your life, allow Jesus to take the knife and cut the sin away. Cut it out. He'll cut the sin out of your life, and then what's left will be wholesome. But if you say, no, Jesus, I, I, don't, I don't want the knife in my life, then the sin will grow bigger and bigger. And you can smell the rottenness. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't smell good. The longer you allow sin in your life, the more rotten you become. So, let's all choose. Whenever we know that there's sin in our life, Let's say, Father in heaven, please apply the knife to my life and cut out the sin. And I'm asking in the name of your son, Jesus. You can pray something like that and he'll cut the, the sin out. He'll do it. He's capable. So we have a core there. We'll cut on this side and on that side. And now we've got that core out. The hornets want to uh, help themselves, too. Okay. So 
these are growth cracks. So it was really, really, really dry, really dry, and then we had a bunch of rain, and it split. And then it was green enough when it split that it healed partially. But that's why you have the splits there. Heirloom varieties tend to split up more, and your, your, your um, hybrid varieties don't, don't split as easily. Now, <clears throat> I don't like to cut it on the board because then later I have to clean the board with a washcloth, so I'm just going to cut it like this. Actually, I need to sharpen this knife. It's a little dull. I'm so thankful to my mom. She put a knife in my hand at four years old and taught me how to use it. And somebody said, isn't that dangerous? Aren't you afraid he's going to cut himself? And mom said, yeah, he cuts himself every now and again, but he's pretty careful. And I would enjoy, I would rather to cut vegetables from mom in the kitchen than to like play with my trucks or my cars, toy cars. I've always enjoyed cutting things. So the more color that you can get in your diet, the better. We're making a colorful salad. I forgot there's one thing that I forgot and that is fennel. I have some fennel out there so after we get done with this we're going to run out there real quick and we will put the fennel in our salad. in there. I would like to thank um, the kind woman who gave us this uh, cutting board. It has been well used. Been a useful gift. All right, I think we're ready to go and grab the fennel. So this okra horn that I have is reminding me of in Daniel chapter 7. It says, Daniel chapter 7 verse 19, Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. And behold, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. So there were ten horns and then this little horn came up and it destroyed three other horns. So later we're going to have a Bible study another day, another time. 
and we're going to learn who this beast is and what the horns represent. We have fennel here. You can see it's starting to go to seed. <clears throat> there are some parasitic wasps that are beneficial for the garden, and the dill and the fennel flowers especially attract those wasps. We're going to get a little bit of this growth. Fennel is one of my favorite. Mm, it smells good. Um, there's something about fennel that is reported to help aid digestion. So did you grow up eating fresh fennel? Uh, yes, my grandma had, had my grandma Grace in Nebraska. She, she would grow fennel and I remember going out in the garden and just raising on it. It's so, so delicious. Um, fennel has like a licorice taste to it. I guess we'll get a few clovers and put them in. Clover's good for your blood. Oh, and we've got a few smart weed um, seeds, or the, the flowers of the smart weed. We'll put a few of those in. This one right here is bindweed. That's, that's very similar in, uh, it's edible as well in the, the bindweed is, uh, see the smart weed is a little more pink and a little more narrow, and the bindweed seed heads are a little bit thicker and not quite as pink. Mm. Okay, we've got our fennel, we've got our clover, we've got our smart weed flowers and our bindweed flowers. We're going to chop these up finely. Kind of tricky sometimes. Um, it's easy to get too much salt with this, so you might want to just add a little bit at a time. And then better to too little than too much, and then you can add a little later. This is nutritional yeast flakes. I'm going to put a little bit more oil. I think we've got enough uh, 
should be ready. Okay, and a, a person's emotional state of being or their mind affects whether or not they can digest their food well. So if you're stressed out and angry or you're feeling hateful towards someone uh, or you're feeling frustrated or irritated towards someone, you won't be able to digest your food very well. If you can't digest your food very well, you won't get the nutrition that you need. So one thing that helps you to be in a, a better frame of mind is thankfulness. So when you, before you eat, when you thank your Heavenly Father for what He's given you, the food that He's created. We wouldn't have this food if He didn't send the sunshine and the rain and if He didn't have put it in the heart of someone to go out and work and plant the seed. So remember to thank your Heavenly Father for the food and for the farmer who worked hard. <clears throat> Alright, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank You for the food that You have provided. We thank You that You sent the sunshine and the rain and we worked hard to plant these um, we worked hard to plow the field first before we planted, but without your blessing, without, what, without the miracle that you send, nothing would grow. Father, thank you that you put a willing heart in the horses to be able to plow the fields. And Father, give us a thankful heart to you and to those who work hard in, in the garden. Thank you, Father. We ask you to bless the food and you give us the strength that we need that we could go out and do your will. We ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. Okay. So, I'm going to... Would you like to try some of this, Angelo? I'll try some. Why not? All right. I'll be your uh, taste tester. Now, the ochre will be very slimy. Very slimy. Very slimy. Don't be too So, you, you have to be a, a tough young man to enjoy the sliminess of it. And, uh, it's one of those things where you either really like it or you really don't like it. And if you don't like it... Acquired taste? Yeah. Perhaps. And if you don't like it, it's okay. You know, there's no no hurt feelings if you don't like it. I'm going to put it right. Okra's going first. Okay. Is this your first time with raw okra? Mmm. It is slimy. And you don't have to eat it if it really, you... It wets the mouth. No, it's, it's not bad at all. <laughs> it, it lubricates. Yeah. I mean, it really lubricates it going really down. Does, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and the good news is that taste buds can change. You, you may, there may be a vegetable you're like, oh, that's horrible. But uh, if you just decide, okay, this is healthy for me, this is nutritious, this will build my bones, this will help my teeth, my cavities to fill in, um, this is, this is going to really help me. I'm going to do this for my health. Uh, then later your chase, taste buds can change. So. It's good that this has a diversity of, of uh, vegetables. Yes. Your kale is really high in calcium. Your okra is really high in calcium. And then uh, typically yellow things have vitamin A. Uh, so we've got yellow tomatoes. We've got our peppers. Um, they say that peppers, like, like these sweet peppers, they say that they're higher in vitamin C than eating an orange. Uh, so you've got vitamin C. Um, there's other things in here that I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not knowledgeable on every, all the nutrition is in here, but it's packed with goodness. Let me grab a couple more bowls for us. Is it a type of heirloom? Which? Uh, the, the pineapple one. Yeah, it is. Pineapple tomato is an heirloom. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We would like to thank, um, again, once again, the kind people that sent these these uh, plates. They're excellent. Stainless steel. Oh. And we'd like to invite, um, like, so the House of Prayer is not built yet, but we are having Bible studies and worship time here. And so if you want to come on Saturday and worship with us, uh, around 1.30 we eat lunch. We have a morning around noon or so, 11, 12, we have a Bible study, and then we also have worship panel around 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And so, uh, if you come on Sabbath, you can help us eat watermelons and help us eat stuff like this. What's the time zone? It's Eastern Standard Time. Yep. Um, 
we're really close to central time, which is just like 20 miles away. Angelo is very brave. Yes. You're, you're very brave. And we'll have some watermelon later. Oh, we've got a hornet in here. Come on, Mr. Hornet, come on out. Friendly hornet? Yeah. They, they know that I want to live at peace with them. Yeah, yeah, they can feel it. Alright, well, thank you all for uh, taking the time to watch and learn and um, I hope that you're inspired to go garden and eat out of your garden.